Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is a Health Tuesday, and thank you so much for hanging out with us because we're going to get you right, okay? And also remind you about some things that you may have put off your to-do list. Now, gynecological health is a vital yet often overlooked aspect of women's overall well-being. Now, regular checkups, early screenings, and open conversations like what we're going to have today are definitely essential in preventing serious conditions and also ensuring just long-term wellness. And today we brought in the experts. We're joined by the good Dr. Dr. Celeste. Van Dunik, a specialist gynecologist as well as a gynecologist, a gynecologic rather, oncologist who is here to help us better understand the importance of prioritizing gynecological health. And I think we've got to do that, Doc, because, yes. you know, it is a long list of to-dos that women have to get through and sometimes we deprioritize our own health. That's true. Yeah. And we actually shouldn't. We That's shouldn't. the number what should be the number one priority, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And that is why we brought, we brought you in here today, because we want to know what are the important reasons for us to check out everything to do with our gynecological health? And also, what does that include? Yeah, so I mean, there's so many things that we can look at at an annual, at least every one to two years, you mm. want to go for a checkup. Yeah. So we look at, if you're a woman's health or a gynecologist, we have to look at everything. We look at your metabolic health, right. your breast health. We can do, start doing breast screening at the appropriate mm. age. It's important just to talk about cervical screening. So we want to prevent cervix cancer. So that's very important uh -huh. to get that into the conversation. About contraception is another topic that, you know, we can always revise. Yeah. Or yeah. talk about um, yeah and just overall reproductive and fit fertility mm -hmm. and um, yeah gynecological health is yes. important so that all is part of it Fertility and infertility, Definitely, right? They both yes, fit into that yes. bracket. Now I wonder, I'm a woman at home or a vagina have, I'm trying to be inclusive and maybe I'm experiencing some symptoms and I've been ignoring it for quite some time, but are there any symptoms that you say, absolutely not, you definitely have to go to your doctor if you experience this? Oh yes, there are actually yeah. a few. So one of the most important ones would be if you're bleeding um, vaginally yeah. after your menopause. I think women um, tend to sort of shrug that off but it's always abnormal and okay. you definitely need to see a doctor then if you've gone through menopause yeah. and you start bleeding then again you know it's not your period that's back you need to go see somebody okay. um, within the next few days to a few weeks at least mm. then something else that's also very important is bleeding after intercourse um, lots of times overlooked but it, there could be something going on in the genital tract in the cervix it might just be an infection but it might be something a bit more which you need to get checked out mm. somebody just maybe needs to look there and make sure that everything's fine. Mm -hmm. A last thing also that's very important is a lump or a bump, you know, an ulcer or a sore mm -hmm. on the genital area that's not going away, yeah. that you've even had antibiotic treatment for. Right. That's extremely important to get that checked out, you know, because it could be something else. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just touch on the bleeding for a second? Yes. Um, is there an amount that you should watch out for? Is it like a little spotting or is it a lot of blood coming out? So, if it's on your menstruation, on your period, yeah. I think everyone is different and there's no set amount anymore to say so many products per day that you should use. If it's more than that, then it's abnormal. That's, you know, that's not how it goes anymore. Mm. It's actually about what is affecting your daily life. So if right. you can't go on um, by, you know, going to work or going to school anymore or do any of your activities of daily living, then it's affecting you and then you should go and seek help because yeah. then we should address that and manage that. Mm, and that's the thing, it is yes. the management that we're trying to get to because you don't have to live this way. You don't have to. You don't have to exactly. live this way. Um, and that's why these conversations are just so important, Doc. But if we're being honest, I mean, there definitely is still a stigma and taboo attached mm. to it. You know, you mentioned vagina and it's like, oh, everybody in the room almost shudders at the sound of it. Um, but we definitely need to normalize just bringing this conversation up every now and then so that people can do oh, exactly yes. that and, and empower themselves, essentially. So how do you think we can even go about doing this and encouraging people to do what we're doing? I think talk about it. Yeah. I think if you have a trusted family me member, a, you know, a sister or mother, yeah. somebody that you really trust and you can share something with, do that. If you feel you not, if you don't feel comfortable with that, then rather go and see someone. There's nothing you can't tell your gynecologist or your women's health doctor. Mm. Really, there's nothing. So if it's affecting you and you're wondering about it, just ask them. Yeah. Just 
talk about it. Oh my goodness. And I love that you've created this safe space in order for us to talk about it. But I know many times, you know, it is quite a, a trepidatious thing for people to even mm -hmm. step into. It's very intimidating. At what age should we start even considering seeing a gynecologist? There's no certain age, you yeah. know, definitely when you start becoming sexually active, I think it's very important right. because then we need to talk about uh, good sexual health, you know, when should we start mm -hmm. cervical screening, contraception, etc. But even teenagers, if they have, you know, severe heavy menstruation or severe pain during their periods, they should go and see someone. It doesn't mean that they're going to get a pelvic exam yeah. necessarily, but, you know, there are treatment options without doing that where they can already go and get some help without missing school. Um, yeah, I think that's very important to remember. Absolutely, Doc. Can I touch on the topics that maybe somebody wouldn't want to? <gasps> Goodness, HPV. Yes, let's talk smears. about it. I know, I'm sorry for the trauma that I've just triggered right now, but they are things that are a little bit scarier, right? So let's talk about preventing these very serious conditions. I mean, how can we go about doing that? So pap smears, we all know, all women dread it, Ooh. but... It should, it is a bit uncomfortable, but it is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And ideally, you know, at least every two to three years, you should go for that. And the procedure is actually very quick. Mm. Um, it's just taking a few cells off of the cervix, the opening of the womb, and they can examine it under a microscope and look for abnormal changes, okay. which can point to a cancer later, which we can then treat to mm. prevent cervical cancer. And of course, you can also test the virus on those cells. Right. And that's actually almost a better test now to check for, um, you know, cervical pre-cancers or even an early cancer. Yeah. And in that way, we can prevent cancer. Okay. Prevention is better than cure. You heard it from the good doctor herself. But listen, there's some good news because she is not going anywhere. We have part two of this gynecological conversation. Yes, we are prioritizing our health, our physical health, our mental health on this Health Tuesday. And you want to stick around for a little bit more when it comes to taking care of you. It's my feel good Now, as we continue our discussion on a gynecological health, thank you so much for still being here. It is important to focus on daily habits and also long-term strategies that can help women maintain optimal well-being. I sure definitely want some of that. Now, from managing menstrual health to boosting fertility and preventing infections, there are proactive steps every woman can take to protect her reproductive health. And joining us right now uh, is once again, Dr. Celeste van Drunik. Doc, thank you so much for being here. I definitely need to get into this, right? So I am in my exercise gear because, yes, I'm out of breath too. I just ran in here. We're going to do a spinning class and I'm definitely right. going to get into all things to do with my own wellness and fitness. And that definitely is all to do with self-care. So I'm wondering what sort of practices women can adopt to ensure self-care in their lives. I think it's important to like you say, move and like you're going to do now, you know, stay active in the way that they like to. Maintaining a good metabolic health, we spoke about this before, is very important. A normal BMI or BMI less, body mass, mass index less yeah. than 30 is very important. Not smoking, we know that, but it <laughs> is important, you know, limiting our alcohol intake. And then specifically gynecological stuff um, that's important is when we use sanitary products, women, um, not to use scented products. I think people forget that. It can cause irritation, inflammation, Mm. Um, another thing is douching, it's cleaning of the inside and that's actually not advised oh. because it messes with all the little organisms, the microbiome okay. in there and you want them to be all in balance. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's actually all that's necessary. That's interesting. Douching is a quite a topic on the yes. social media streets, yes. whether you should or shouldn't. No. Also, when it comes to cleaning your vagina area, mm. whether you should use soap or anything like that. So I'm so glad you touched on that. But let's talk about irregular periods. I yes. mean, I know some women deal with that. It's supposed to be a 28 day cycle, if I'm not mistaken. Well, 28 to 35 days is okay. Oh, okay. And it will never always be 28 days every month. Oh. Because remember, every month has a different amount of days, sometimes right. 30, 31. <laughs> yes. So 28 to 35 is fine. Okay, I think you've just given a lot of women a bit of relief with that. Yes. 28 to 35 days is what we're looking at. But sometimes, you know, our bodies operate outside of that. And that's kind of when you have to show, throw caution to the wind. So what do we do in those circumstances? So when bleeding is irregular, I really think you need to go and talk to somebody about it. There can be many different reasons, depending on your age, yeah. you know, where you are in your reproductive course of life. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to go and talk to somebody about it. It's not normal and we should actually address that. Also mm -hmm. when bleeding is very heavy, and as I said, it affects your daily activities, mm -hmm. you definitely need to go and talk to somebody about it because there is something that we can do about it. Yeah, can I ask you, what, what does irregular 
look like. So if, you know, you are having a menstruation or bleeding, mm. whether it is outside of your period, five days, six days after, or it's prolonged, it's mm. just two, three weeks of the month. Wow. You know, that's really, um, if, that will really affect your life. Mm. And so that's irregular or a random bleed in the middle of the month, end of the month before, just not when you're expecting your period. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you said how it affects your life. And I know that for many women, they want to embark on the journey of fertility. And that is directly linked to one another. Yes. So how can women boost, you know, their fertility and make sure that if they're going on that journey of wanting to become pregnant, they're okay? So it's good. It's it's important to go for regular checkups. You can talk to your women's doctor, women's health doctor, your gynecologist about it. Maintaining a normal BMI, as I said before, it's very important. Yeah. Um, getting all your chronic conditions under control. If you're suffering from type two diabetes or any type, you know, type one diabetes or hypertension, to get that under control is very important. Um, practicing safe sexual practices, you know, using condoms is very important, yeah. and getting treatment early on for infections is very important. Important. Mm. And of course, the cervical screening for cervix cancer is very important. Sure. So many important things to take yes. down here, Doc. I wonder if you have any lasting words of wisdom that you can share with women just to say, you know, on a final note, this is what you got to do. <laughs> talk about it. Yes. <laughs> you have to talk about it. Talk to your doctor about it. Don't be shy. We've heard it all, you know, just tell them. I think that's the best advice I could yeah. give anyone. If it's bothering you, you can just get reassurance if it's nothing. And if it's something more serious, you can get help. So talk Absolutely. about it. I love that final note. Yes, talk about it. Make sure that you find yourself a good doctor that you feel comfortable it's to be able to share the safe space oh, yes. with. Because it is our bodies. We only get one. And we got to make sure that we keep it in top health.